From the potent imagination of Edgar Rice Burroughs comes the elusive and alluring world of Barsoom and its most famous part-time occupant, John Carter. Join me as I unbox the latest release from Modifius, a way for us to explore Barsoom and 2d20. This curiously square box was delivered to me by a cheerful DHL worker after it had been held ransom for just over two weeks. <laughs> anyway, that story ended happily, and although there seems to be some accordion effect on one end, I have absolutely no concern about whether or not the material inside is packaged. There's one thing that uh, Modifius has always managed to do well, it's pack what they ship you. All right, now we'll carefully cut open the top, and once we have exposed <laughs> all the air pillows and bubble wrap underneath, we're going to go on a little journey. Here we go, over the top, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So we have a layer of air pillows, which even though clearly this box uh, took a beating here on the corner, uh, have contributed to protecting these air pillows, which contributed to protecting the stuff that's inside. This was a Kickstarter, which is delivering, I think, later than people imagined, with enough explanation that it's not at that point where it feels too late. There's a whole lot of things that could be ordered. I did not order this time the whole lot of things, but one thing that I was quite interested in was, of course, more dice. And there were a lot to choose from, and in the end I just went with this set, the helium dice, and we'll talk about that a little later. Now you also see a box of miniatures. These are NPC cards, characters, and tokens. And the other box of cards there is a larger format of landscapes and you know, story seeds and descriptions and, and that sort of thing. So I'm not sure how much use I will get from those, but they're nice to have. All right. Where to next? Should we fool around with the cards a while and take a look at the package and, and look at the dice and or you know maybe mess around with the miniatures? Hmm. I wonder if there's something in this box that people would really like to see. Oh right. The book. Well, as you can see, the book is cocooned in bubble wrap and everything is taped in place. And I'm reaching underneath here, and there is uh, more air pillow layers. So, excellent job, Modifius, particularly because this ended up being stuck in a customs department for two weeks for some reason, which has not really yet been determined. All right, that's how thick the slipcase of books is. There are two books in landscape format inside a heavy slipcase. So, shelving doesn't really need to be interrupted as the dimensions are still the standard large size RPG book, not the digest size, which has been sweeping the industry. And everything's just oriented in a different direction. No longer portrait, but landscape. And I'm happy to see that the screen is conforming to the industry standard of very, very thick. And here on the top of it, we see that the screen is covered by this small booklet, 30 or 32 pages if I remember correctly, which is supposed to be a helpful tool or set of tools for game masters. And we'll take a look at that a little later. 
but I'm sure right now it seems a little bit like we are stalling, like there is something else that we should be doing. We should not be sitting here looking at the screen still in its plastic wrap and looking at the bags of dice. And I agree. Let's look at something else. So here it is in all its glory. This is the slipcase. And here, of course, you'd be expecting to see the spines of the books. But that's not where we're going to find them because the slipcase is likewise in a landscape orientation. So here, this is the bottom, this is the back, and as we you know, turn it around, we will now see that on the top is where the spines show. So you could have it sitting on your shelf oriented this way with the spines out, or you could have it on your shelf straight up and down with the spines at the top. Either way, you're going to be able to see the branding information, and you're going to be able to recognize it from a distance as John Carter of Mars. There's no thumb cutout or anything along those lines, so we'll see how tightly the books are in there and how difficult it may be to remove them. But before we do that, Let's take a journey of our own and marvel at the wonders of shrink wrap before the inevitable happens. And with my trusty X-Acto knife, I cut a strip off of it. Just a strip. The rest of the shrink wrap is still on the slipcase for reasons surpassing all understanding. But there we go. The spines are free. We can see it's a nice, tight fit books are the same height. The branding information is well-centered in comparison to the book and to other books in the series, which is a failing that is often seen out there, but not here. Of course, we've gone completely out of focus, but I only have one hand, so please forgive me. Focus will be restored. Ah, focus has been restored. <laughs> and, well, you know. So, Upside down and backwards. Here is the John Carter of Mars 2D20 Adventures on the Dying World of Barsoom Core Rulebook. Yes, I can read, and so can you. Pretty dramatic. Combat-centric. High adventure. Far end of pulp heroism. This is planetary romance. And speaking of planetary, look at this map of Mars. And this bright red ribbon on our favorite kind of binding. That's very impressive, these end papers. Now, the reason for this format, this broad landscape format, is so that vistas of art could be contained within. And honestly, that is what I was expecting. Here's one example of a full-page bottom spread of art. However, there is a lot of text to this kind of game. 2D20, the way it's currently organized, is quite wordy and comes in multiple sections which you will have to become familiar with and learn the locations of. But also with the current set of 2D20 games being introducing established properties such as Conan, such as Star Trek, there's a lot of page count that needs to go to the inevitable consideration of what if someone has never played a role-playing game and has never seen Star Trek, John Carter, Conan, or whatever, right? How can we get those people into a position where they can play and have fun? So those considerations give us a fairly text-heavy situation. This is a campaign done in the same style, similarly dramatic cover, bright red bookmark. This is the Phantoms of Mars. Now, I'm not going to do a, a walkthrough of this, but I'll just show you that the same end papers are there with this incredible map of Barsoom. And you know, we'll, we'll take a look at a couple of pages or parts of pages to demonstrate that everything is consistent and in a specific style. This is a very lengthy campaign, and it promises 
high adventure. I haven't played it, so I can't tell you if it delivered on that promise or not, or in what style the adventure was put forward, how linear it might be, or how based in the idea of options. Now, let's take a close look at the dice, because I'm a dice kind of guy. These are a bone or ivory style of dice. There are several dice sets available. Uh, these are the helium dice. These were the standard dice. And there's a, a few other sets, which I have coming to me uh, under separate covers. So, take a look very carefully. It's a mottling of a bone kind of ivory color with a kind of milky white color with bright red numbers. We're in quite close. You can see that attention to detail is quite high. Uh, the texture on the dice is very smooth, not unlike the feel of pearls. So, pretty dramatic. So, now since we're talking about dice, what kind of host would I be if we didn't roll some? So let's... Uh, zoom out here a little bit and see how they work. Look at that. What a great roll, a one and a two. Remember in 2d20, you're looking to roll low. All right. Options for the system include things like this. Now these uh, likely won't see use at my table, but I will probably enjoy using them as I read through and acquaint myself with this exact expression of 2d20. We have this larger tarot sized format which on one side has imagery of Barsoom. You see it says Barsoom from the air and then on back it has a description of this image including things like you know adventure seeds and, and so on and so forth. The idea is to help immerse the group in where they are. So your mileage may vary about this kind of tool, but a lot of people find things like the NPC cards, the smaller standard card format, to be incredibly useful. Now, how does the game differ from its implementation in Star Trek Adventures or its implementation in Conan Adventures in an age undreamed of? Well, it dials up survivability in the name of sword and planet heroic level adventure while also streamlining the system. The core book has 270 or so pages of gameable content, much of which is setting material so that players can dive right in to whichever of the three very specifically delineated eras of play given for Barsoom. The game also takes time to talk to game masters as players to talk about specific tips or methodologies or outlooks for running the game. This is a little bit more obvious than what we saw in Conan, which spoke directly to how to run a Conan adventure, and much more obvious than what we see in Star Trek Adventures. If you were an early purchaser of Mutant Chronicles, much of what you saw in Conan likely looked familiar, and by comparison, John Carter of Mars seems more like an easier introduction into what 2D20 can do as a, as a tool or a means of getting a very specific genre to the table. And John Carter does it in a a more fluid way. There are fewer moving parts and there are more things in place to get you going more quickly. And then once you're there, then stepping into one of the heavier 2D20 games will be child's play. This is not to say that the game lacks meat. There are very clear indications that players and game masters alike are expected to dig into this game, learn how to play it, and then play it hard and well. Things like talents, one of the core ways to differentiate your character, come with rules for designing your own. Similarly, technology that you find or are assigned is to be created in many cases. So, you will be playing 
on Barsoom, but you will also be collaborating. To return briefly to the topic of the format, the landscape format, and any possible negatives that might be associated with it, I've picked three books in the same format at random off of my shelf. These are, you know, well-used pieces of my library. These all on the topic of the sword, but the topic is irrelevant. The design is. They've all been in my library for around 10 years and, you know, are in good shape. These are with the same sort of binding and, you know, they are what they are. And they've simply been sitting on the shelf this way for all those many years and are still as sharp and normal as they were. This is a hardcover example. This one is a soft cover example. It's in great shape. And finally, for those who know their Capo Ferro, <laughs> yeah. likewise in great shape. So I have no concerns about the binding, and hopefully these three random examples from three different you know, book printers from three different points in time uh, can help assuage any concerns you might have on that front. More to the point than the binding and the format will be the text. Where we should have a little concern is with the booklet that comes with the narrator's screen. While the content is excellent and is the sort of thing you would want to find in a narrator's screen, actually, it raises two points. The first point is that the information provided is so good and of such an essential nature that it rightfully belongs in the core book. And the second factor is that the paper of this particular supplement to the screen is quite flimsy and not likely to survive. And so again, rightfully belonged in the core book. So it's somewhat of a shame that it is separated out into this thin value add for the screen. Whereas the screen has significantly high production qualities all of its own and doesn't need this slender booklet of a few pages, some 30 or 32 pages, which, because, as I said, of their nature, really belong in the Game Master section in the core book and not out in this separate space. But, be that as it may, the key point to take away from the narrator's toolkit booklet is that its quality is far below that of the other products. Demonstrate what I mean, we should actually look at it. So this is the screen. <laughs> look at this thing. We have one, two, three, four big panels. Nice thick cardboard and the design of the joints between the panels is great. And then there's this. So we've got high gloss pages, but they're very thin. It's 30 pages, 32 pages, and it's saddle stitch. It's stapled in the middle. And it's, as you can see, quite flimsy. This is the sort of paper that will curl up if you live in a humid environment and that sort of thing. So we have this monumentally, incredibly well done screen coupled with, you know. So on the outside, we have, or on the outside panels, we have Mars art of our Barsoom map on the inside. In pretty standard format, we have dice on the left and then moving across through different things that you may or may not find useful in play. And your mileage is definitely going to vary with the interior of any sort of screen unless you design it yourself. We have a lot of chart-based information all laid out by panel. So let's take a look at it again. Right, We have a pretty good font size 
and the width of the entire screen is is quite large. So here is what the player side will be looking at. So it does carry a very strong violent theme and you might be saying well is that what I want all the time? Well you know if you haven't read the John Carter stories that's something that should happen next. There are lots of great artistic touches who noticed the little you know jeweled edges and just it's a nice product front and back. The book itself we've already looked at. It's pretty impressive. Looks even more so next to the toolkit booklet. And let's talk about what I mentioned uh, earlier when we were talking about Facebook about the unboxing. It will fit very nicely inside the gentle arc of the screen. So if we just open up to this random page, this is detailing the later history of Barsoom. It fits in very nicely. You'll have a space just ahead of the screen for rolling dice if you roll your dice hidden and for notes or other paraphernalia. On the pages full of text you'll have six columns to work with sitting here and other pages are like this one which has some kind of one or two column chart and some inspiring art and a variety of text. So it really does provide you with an awful lot of text to look at, meaning hopefully, if it's well organized, fewer page flips and a larger font that you can make use of to read more easily in low light conditions or when distracted and that sort of thing. So this landscape format is something that I hope we will see in more products, not just ones that have you know sweeping Martian vistas or, or the like, but ones that can actually use this space with forethought thinking how to present charts or chart-like materials and text and other types of instructions such as flowcharts or, or different ways to present learning or running a process. So I guess that's our challenge for RPG design in the coming years, taking this kind of format and maximizing it. But anyway, this has been our unboxing of John Carter of Mars from Modiphius. Next up, reading the version that went to print and preparing some commentary and thoughts upon it, and hopefully actual play.